Welcome back to another video on the Epic Squid Fishing Channel. I am here at the Narrow River on a pretty rainy day. We've actually got a bit of drizzle coming down with thunderstorms predicted in the afternoon. Actually looking to pick up a trout to smoke today, which is quite uncommon for me. I normally release most of my fish. We might do a bit of a catch and cook, honestly. Well, I didn't even have time to get my camera on my head because it was still drizzling, but we came up through this little section and, uh, well, we're already on the board. Now this is what you call a snub-nosed trout. It's like this one's run into a wall. I actually see it quite often. This is about the third one I've caught this season with snub nose. It's the f one of the fattest fish I've caught all season, honestly. We're gonna get it back quite quick. Look at that fish, it's definitely run into a wall. See you later. Oh, we've just come back to the bit of water where I caught that first fish. There's no reason why there's not going to be more in here. So let's get the fly in. Since that first fish like ran out pretty much immediately, the others will be pretty good. Oh, and there we go. There's another one sitting on that bank. He's going to go up the pool. Oh, there's one behind him. Come out. Oh, he's, geez, he's still a good fish. Oof. Going up. Going up, he'll turn around and go straight to the middle of it now. I want to try and get him out of there with as little uh, commotion as possible. Oh. Doesn't matter. Come on, come on. Oh, another fatty. Bullet rainbow for the now roar. Splash. Right, back for round three. I reckon there's probably at least ten in here. Oh. There's gotta be a lot in here. Oh, look at that. Immediate. As soon as I dropped it in. And that was a separate one again. Strong. Oh, off. Put a bit of heat on him to try and get him out of there. Hook another one straight away. They're all good fish. There's a lot of fish in there. Oh, immediate. Look at that. As soon as I dropped it in there, it was like right on his face. He's going up. They're not big. Oh no, that one's a bit bigger actually. Thought he was not that big, but he's gone. Look at that. Coming at me, going up. Going across. How many is that? Five in that pool now. And I broke two of them off. Well, pulled the hook. They were a bit smaller. I really only want to get the bigger ones up for a photo. And that's exactly what we got here. Good condition. Get him up for a quick shot before he goes. Nice fish, another really, really nice one. That must be feeding up hard before the rain coming. We have a fish in a pretty precarious situation. Pretty attractive to fish. It's nice and cold underneath these trees. There's very good shelter there. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna tighten the hell up of our drag, because he's gonna go straight in there. But, I reckon we might be able to stop him Oh, oh, we just took off the surface. Would you look at that? It came right over to see us. Rainbow. And it will depend on if we can get the fly in there correctly. That's good cast. Ah. There's another one there. Drag right up, right up. 
Pull them out, pull them out, pull them out. Stop, stop. Stop, 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 stop. Get out of there. Oh, he's going back in again. Oh, we haven't got him out yet. We almost have. Almost. No, 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 don't go back in. Almost got him. Almost got him. He can still go back in there anytime he wants. Oh. oh got him out. No, we don't. <laughs> Going back in. Get up. Well, frankly, that was kind of unbelievable. Uh, that fish got first cast. I've nailed the cast, of course. Here we go, in focus. Brilliant fish. Alright, see you later. Get out of those trees. This is another pretty good looking pool. Oh, I see one. Pretty good one. Big, big mark. Sitting in the back end of here. Get him. I got one. I don't know if it was him. That was close. It's pretty big, I think. <laughs> Big head, big big head on him. Just come from a pretty nice pool with a couple of fish sitting in it and got one right up the front. It's not the biggest, but he's pretty nice jack, honestly. Big head. In decent condition. Could obviously be a lot bigger. He looks ready to go to me, so I think we should let him go. Lots of weed flying down now. Must be a lot being produced up there. board again. I think this is, oh, what fish is this? I don't know, I'm losing count now. Probably number five or number six. Let's get him on his good side. Another little jack. Not the biggest of fish, but we did follow him all the way up. Nice. I'll let him go. See you later. Alright, we're still on the uh, hunt for one to take home for a catch and cook. But the threat of the thunderstorm sort of subsided. We've got more up that way and probably a little bit more on the other side of the river. But that other one went right around us, thankfully. 
Um, yeah, we've got a bit more river to cover. Hopefully we get a nice fat hen, because they're usually the good ones to take home. The jacks tend to have a bit less condition on them, so... Yeah, we've got a nice bit of water up here, so let's hopefully go get one. I think I spoke a bit too soon on the uh, thunderstorm threat. Looks like there's some coming now, but it's still a fair, fair distance away. Should start to hear the thunder soon, and we got to get up here pretty quickly and find that fish. Doesn't quite know what hit him. It's gonna be another jack. Another jack. I must have just try and shake it out this one. It was a guess that he had it in his mouth. Oh, he's just beached himself. Uh, I reckon we'll take this one. So I've got this nice fish here, and I'm going to show you how I kill them. And that got him that time. Okay, now the next thing that you need to do, if you want to be eating them, is I just give the gills a good mess around. Normally I do this with a knife, but fingers work just as well. Just run your fingers all through the gills to get the blood pumping. Just after they're dead, it'll uh, keep the flesh really good. Right, out. we've got our fish all done. We're going to take them back to the car and put them in the chilli bin. Right, well, that storm's definitely on its way now. It's just creeping its way behind us. We've got our fish for the catch and cook. Look at that angry, angry stuff behind us. Let's get walking before another opening day happens. Right, we made it to the car in time, and it looks like the thunderstorm might be just going slightly around the edge of where we're fishing. We're now gonna get on the road, and I'll see you at the filleting bench. Okay, we've just got home beating that thunderstorm. It looks like there's another one on the way behind me. You can see it's pretty, pretty dark. We're gonna get straight into it, get the fish out. Fill it up nicely. I'm expecting it to be pretty orange flesh. We have a visitor. We have someone who thinks he's getting a piece. So I'll fill in a trout basically just like any other fish by starting up here near the pectoral fins and just making one cut straight down until I feel the spine right here then cut down to the belly without piercing the gut cavity. Now then I bring the knife up along the top, feeling for the backbone, and come along until I hit the dorsal fin. Then I just run the knife all the way along, trying to keep the knife in line with the backbone. Then I will stick the knife right through and out into the tail. It's actually not as orange as I was expecting. Then I just run the knife along that backbone. And there's quite a few pin bones up there that we have to get rid of. Instead of taking that other fillet off, I leave it on so we have a better platform to cut this fillet off. Same thing down here, don't pierce the gut cavity, turn him around, now we go down the backbone again, I've got a cat trying to steal some. <laughs> now we're going to try and get this onto the backbone, this can be the toughest part because the uh, bones sort of split down one side of the trout and if you take that fillet off 
can be quite hard to actually keep on the right bit of the backbone. So now we're actually over the ribs. We're gonna just ease it, that fillet off. Don't pierce the gut cavity. Now we're at the belly flap. We're just gonna keep easing the fillet until we go around that fin. And there we go. All right, it's not that orange, but it's still pretty good, honestly. We'll go to the other side and we've already made a pretty big start on it. Right, there's a little bit more ribs to go around. These fish are quite bony, honestly. Right. Right, here's our second fillet. What do you think of that, Nerf? Come on, up, up. Like trout, don't you? Bridge. Okay, this is a, a fish that Blair's caught today in the Nauru River. He's um, filleted it, and this is how I do um, seasoning for the smoker. Um, everybody does it different, but we're on a tray, it's got holes in it, and I'm going this one here. I'm going to do a, a what I, I call a two day soak. My mix plain. Uh, table salt and ordinary brown sugar sort of just roughly a uh, tablespoon two of those it's probably a little bit more doesn't matter I better not get the the brown sugar and the salt so a good heaped again so it's just two to one you can do it with teaspoons dessert spoons whatever as long as you're doing two to one crush it all down, you get a few lumps of it, mix it all in, so it's mixed with the brown sugar, I'll show you what I'm going to do with the black pepper in a little while, but mix it right in, this one here has been in the fridge a little while, and it's quite dry looking, but as soon as you put the, the salt and brown sugar mix in, it'll start to go quite wet, so I've probably got too much here for one fish, but I'll probably use all of it. And don't be worried about most of it will dribble off. So just lay it all over as thick as you can. And after a time, we're going to put tin foil over that and put it back in the fridge for two days. So we've got that. And then I get straight in with just any old um, crushed black pepper. And I give it heaps because some of it will come off. It will come off with the salt. Put a tin foil over the top just to stop it letting too much air in overnight just like that and it's just enough to keep the, the main lot of air off it Blair you can have a look tomorrow and show you what happens after a day so that's what it looks like now and tomorrow that'll all turn into liquid 24 hours later the fish is nice and wet from all of that lovely brown sugar and salt we're going to shove it in the smoker tomorrow stir them all up and it should be great Okay, this is the fish Blair caught on Thursday, it's now Saturday. Um, this is what it looks like after, I call it two days soaking. So, two nights, um, you wouldn't want to leave it much longer. All of the brown sugar and salt has um, soaked in. This tray has got perforated holes uh, underneath it. 
if I can get it out so you can see that any of the excess juice will drain through down to the bottom. It's drained off nicely, the salt and pepper have um, soaked in. You can see the, the crushed pepper lying on the top, it's not, it's not uh, wood chip or anything, that's just crushed pepper, that's a good thing, though I like that. Next step is we're going to take our fine manuka sawdust and we're going to go out to the smoker. Right, right, we're about to get this fish in the smoker, should be good. This smoker is a, a common smoker that you can get at any of Mitre 10 or Bunnings or anything like that. And they generally use uh, methylated spirits, which I find if you're desperate and you didn't have gas, you could use it, but it's not consistent. I'm using the, the old barbecue and just the pot boiler on the end of the barbecue. And I turn it on full, I preheat it. The one thing I, I forgot to tell you is when I take it out of the fridge, I let it warm up for at least two hours, covered so the flies don't get on it. Don't put it in the centre. So in the centre is the hottest part. You don't need a great deal. I generally go around the outside like this. Just a couple of handfuls. Leave the centre. Don't put it in the centre, otherwise you'll get that burnt taste to it. Just see it, just starting to smoke. It's on high, you're just gonna check that. Get it in there very quickly. Um, get my lid on. Fish is smoking. Uh, shouldn't take too long. We've only got about nine minutes. We may need to put it on for a bit longer, but it should come out real nice. This one's taking a bit longer than uh, normal. It's a bit windy today. I checked that nine minutes wasn't quite done, so we've probably gone 12 to 14 minutes. So I'll show you what I check when I open it up. It's not so dark, this one. It hasn't burnt up a lot of the sawdust because of the wind getting up underneath. So, I generally, you don't want to overcook it, but get two forks like that, and you can see it peeling away. Well and truly done. See that? Lovely, probably a little bit too long, but it's looking good. So if I'd have put more sawdust in, it would have been a lot darker. But that, that's not bad. Well, most of this uh, fish is actually gone now from last night's bit of a party we had, but um, we're gonna go for a taste test. On the old cracker and in we go. Mmm, mmm. Probably have some. You got any bones here? Bones? Bottom side. Yeah, well, here, here, here. That's got bones. I think that's all right. Yeah, there you go. Right. Quite subtle flavour this one. He um hadn't really been feeding on insect life. He'd sort of been well mostly wheat I think what we found in him, but still really nice. Normally we get them a bit more orange than that. That's going to end off this catch and cook. I hope you all enjoyed the uh, video. First catch and cook we've done. And uh, let me know if you enjoyed it and want to see more.